instructional specialist here at Christ the King. Um, and glad to be here to share with you about a program we're very proud of and to make you all more aware of what we're doing with the Raising the Bar program and why we're doing it and our hopes for the future for the Raising the Bar program. Children with phonological processing difficulties struggle with the correct interpretation and manipulation of the sound structure that's used in our language. Phonological processing is something that generally develops naturally, just like talking. We don't have to teach our babies to talk. We just expose them, they, they explore, we expose, they explore, and they learn to talk. Sometimes glitches come up with speech, like a child develops a lisp, or a child develops an articulation problem, you go get therapy. This that phonological processing should develop naturally too, just like speaking, but sometimes there's a glitch. And Barton Reading and Spelling Program is the therapy that a child with phonological processing difficulties needs. So that's what we're matching. Now, you've also already heard us talk about the word dyslexia. So we need to mention that too and where this fits in in our program. Dyslexia is an inherited neurological condition that makes it difficult to read, write, and spell despite conventional good instruction and children with an average or above average intelligence. So the difference you need to look at here is that children with phonological processing issues that can be caused by a couple different things. You can have phonological processing issues and not necessarily be dyslexic, but if you are dyslexic, you definitely have phonological processing issues. Phonological processing issues are the hallmark, key number one criteria for dyslexia. So think about it like this. You could have a cough. Doesn't necessarily mean you have bronchitis. You could have a cough for a couple different reasons, but if you have bronchitis, you definitely have a cough. So you can have phonological processing difficulties and with all of the students in our program, we know that for sure. So we know that they're a good match for this tutorial system. But we don't know that all of our children are dyslexic. Some parents pursue that diagnosis, some do not. We don't need it to, to implement our program or to put a child in our program. Um, some, but we do need to watch for that. We do tell our parents it's a possibility. Kind of like if you have the cough, you got a possibility you have bronchitis. But maybe it's just something else, too. Much research has gone into the development of this program, I found. The Barton Method is based on the Orton-Gillingham Method, which was founded in the 1930s by Samuel Orton, a psychiatrist and neuro neuropathologist, and Anna Gillingham, a psychologist and educator. The program uses a unique methodology that is multi-sensory in nature. Students manipulate colored tiles while listening and speaking. The rules for reading and spelling are taught from the most common to the least, and every rule is explained in very much detail. Rules are continually revisited and reinforced throughout the entire program, which includes 10 levels. Tutoring occurs in a ratio of one to two students per tutor and at, um, as an ideal, at an ideal pace of two one-hour sessions per week year-round. I won't go into a lot of facts about brain research, but through brain imagery, MRIs, scientists have discover that, discovered that there is a true physical difference between the brain of a dyslexic and someone who is not. They have observed the neurons in the brains of dyslexic people in usual places and their pathways are not neatly or efficiently ordered. Amazingly, functioning MRI show that when a dyslexic person participates in an effective intervention program, such as the Barton program, the pathways of the neurons become more efficient. No program can completely change the way a dyslexic's brain is wired, but with the proper instruction, reading, spelling, and writing can greatly improve for those people. I've been very blessed and honored to join our Raising the Bar program this year. It certainly has taken off since it began. Today at Christ the King School, we have 
140 students in kindergarten through fifth grade who received tutoring during the school day. Mrs. Hall, Mrs. Harp, and I tutor students individually or in groups of two for approximately 45 minutes, twice a week. We each have other responsibilities, but raising the bar tutoring consumes the majority of most of our days. This is our first year for raising the bar after school. We have 13 students who participate, and I'm very proud of that. They see their tutors one-on-one -on -one for an hour session, both on Mondays and Wednesdays. Raising the bar after school enables us to serve our middle school students without disrupting their school day schedules. It is also utilized by families who do not want their child to miss classes during the school day. I'm proud to say that we have seven tutors for our after school program and I'd like to introduce them to you. Nancy Boland and Donna McAvoy, if you all could stand up, that would be great. They come to us with years of experience. Heather Gossam and Sarah Baumgartner are faculty members here at Christ the King. Um, Karen Kirkland was going to try to be here tonight, but I don't see her. She is also one of our tutors, and she's our CCD director here at the cathedral, so you may know, uh, know her from that. And of course, Mrs. Harp in the back, and I tutor during the after school program too. I'm grateful for all of them for their hard work and dedication. Between both raising the bar during the school day and after school, we are able to help 12% of our entire Christ the King population grades K through eight. So for just a few moments, we wanna talk about our objectives for why we want to have this program here at Christ the King and what it is doing for us. First, I see it changing the culture for students with reading difficulties here at our school. Some, uh, we've got our teachers are more patient, they know what they're looking for in students, they're, they're finding those characteristics and they're bringing those kids forward hoping that they've got it right, that this child is one we can help. That is a huge change in our culture. These are children that some situations, these children may have had to leave our school to get the correct help. We don't have to do that anymore. They are welcomed in our building. We know that they can see, succeed in so many different ways. So we're changing that culture. It also allows our children to reach their potential we often are telling our teachers, this is not necessarily the lowest kid in your class. This is the kid that could be superior, but they're not reaching that potential because of the difficulty with the reading and writing. So this is helping us find those kiddos and getting them, all of, all of them, to their potential. It's allowing us to identify students early. In the past, so many children like this had to struggle for a long time. They had to be frustrated for a long time. And in some schools, they have to actually fail before they get help. Working in the public schools, I knew children that literally had to be in fourth or fifth grade and proving, they had, if they had to prove they could only read at a second grade level to show they were a full two years behind before they got any help. That's not what we want here. We do not want these children to feel like they failed. We want to intervene early. We start screening our kids at the end of our four-year-old preschool program. We will screen all along the way. It is never too late to find help. I wish we found every kid at the end of preschool. I can't say that we do. We are still finding them in fifth grade and sixth grade, but it's never too late. But obviously, the earlier the better. So we are a huge lifeline to a lot of kids. We are saving them lots of frustration and lots of pain by intervening immediately and not letting them experience the level of frustration they could if we weren't already stepping in. We are offering something here that very few schools offer. Uh, there is another Catholic school that has someone trained to do Barton too, um, but this is a very unique 
it is a very innovative program and it's very, very special. So I want everyone here to know that what we have here is something very few schools have. I also want to give credit to Paul Smith for getting us to this point. I gave credit for Karen McNay for getting us off and running, but it is Paula Smith who said it needs to grow. We need to find a way to do it after school. We need to find a way to do it with every grade. We were limiting ourselves to kids in fifth grade and not being able to do much once we had a kid in middle school. And it is Paula Smith who said, no, we're going to find a way. We're going to do more. We're going to grow. So we need to give her credit for that. Because her motto, as she told us the other day, is everybody here grows. So Kathy and Marsha and me, we're growing, trying to find ways to do this, but our kids are growing too, and our faculty's growing, and it's all because Paul Smith's pushing us to do it. So our ultimate goal, if we even get this halfway right, this is what I think we're going to do for these kiddos. We're going to find a way to foster their strengths. We're going to provide them the proper remedial instruction through Barton. We're going to find a way to accommodate their deficits that we see. We're going to have these students reach their ap academic potential while becoming productive members of society with a strong work ethic and an appreciation for their quirky but also creative and amazing minds. I also want to mention the support of the Grandparent Loyalty Circle, private donations, and part of our sip and shop that has paid for the cost of our after school tutor. It's not a free program. Um, the school is covering the cost of the support staff that are here um, to run the program, but not the tutoring fees of the after school tutor. All students needing the program cannot be tutored during the school day. Um, because tutoring costs uh, do not come out of tu tuition, we need to find other ways to make sure that we continue this program. Share with others about the positives of having this program in our school. Get the word out about its benefits and that the school is addressing dyslexia when many other schools are not. And that we are doing it at this current time with no additional costs to our families. Financially, we need your support too. That we would prefer to keep this program as it is. That we do not want to charge for the for these services. We want to keep those receiving the services during the school day and in the after school program, paying the same for the service. Nothing. We want to take time today to celebrate this important program, but we also want to start plans to keep it sustainable. We want you as parents to have a stake in this process. If anyone here this evening is interested in being part of a committee for to help with our Raising the Bar program, to um, help us plan for the future of the program, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate you.